welcome to the Rod of Iron Freedom Festival. We're here with Pastor Sean of Sanctuary Church. Um, hello, Pastor. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and also about your crown? Sure. Um, I'm Pastor Moon, uh, Rod of Iron Ministries, and also head of Sanctuary Church, Newfoundland, Pennsylvania. Um, you know, the Bible talks about in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5 and 6, that Jesus Christ is a faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and that he uh, loves us and forgives of our sin by his own blood, and has made us kings and priests. The Bible also talks about in Revelation 3 and uh, 11, that no man should be, uh, let, the King James says, let no man take thy crown, right? So the crown that God gives us of sovereignty, um, should not be taken by any earthly man. This is given to us by God. And I think the founding fathers also understood, uh, they didn't wear crowns, obviously, but uh, they were fighting against an evil crown, uh, but they were all biblically based. And so that's why in America, we have something called castle doctrine, which basically says that citizens of America are kings and have castles, right? And can defend those just like any other king on the on the planet. Uh, but the crown symbolizes not only the biblical um, a couture, one of the biblical accoutrements of the co heirs with Christ, but also symbolizes sovereignty and that it comes from God. Also, your father wore crowns uh, on many occasions uh, for special events. Uh, does that have something to do with you wearing crowns? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we see, you know, true father as the returning Jesus. So we see him as, of course, a critical, uh, the critical center of establishing a new kingdom on earth. And of course, that kingdom is not a kingdom of communism, socialism, leftism, totalitarianism, but it's a kingdom of shepherds, as the Bible talks about uh, in, you know, uh, Revelation chapter two and Psalm, Psalms chapter two as well. Verse eight and nine. It also talks about it in, in in chapter nineteen of Revelation and also uh, twelve of Revelation. But talks about that uh, God will give you the ends of the earth for your possession, and you shall rule the nations with the rod of iron. That's in Psalms. That's in the Old Testament. And God is telling His people that they will have to rule. Now, the Greek translation that we see in both Revelation uh, two twelve and nineteen is the word poimino, and the word poimino means to rule or act as a shepherd acts. Uh, that is, in other words, the Poimana rule is not a tyrannical rule that we've seen of the satanic kings, but it is the, the rule of honorable, godly people who are in the image of Christ. Um, so uh, for, you know, uh, I, I, Father, True Father Moon, um, uh, war crowns to symbolize that and also uh, bestowed upon me his crown three times, made me, making me his heir and successor. Uh, but in a ceremony, I also, uh, we also crowned uh, all our brothers and sisters uh, to uh, represent that crown, that kingship uh, that spreads um, out through the kingdom and um, establishes the citizens of God or the co-heirs of Christ in his kingdom um, as uh, kings and queens uh, in the kingdom of God. Uh, that have the right of kings and queens, but of course are to act as uh, the shepherd, as a godly shepherd, uh, as a good and honorable uh, 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 individual. Uh, around the time of the Korean War, your father, the late Reverend Sun Ming Moon, true father, was accused of being a spy by the Communist Party in North Korea. Uh, on many occasions, and finally they sentenced him to hard labor in Hungnam concentration camp. Yes, right. Were those accusations true? If not, what was the real reason they imprisoned him? Yeah, of course they're not true. I mean, they're, uh, these, uh, you know, the communists would imprison anybody who was preaching the gospel or, or a Christian message. Um, and um, even even before that, he was also imprisoned by the colonial Japanese who had conquered and colonized Korea and uh, made the Korean people into their slaves. Uh, so he was also imprisoned on them when he in his twenties. But um, under the under the communist North Koreans um, again in uh, 1948, and it wasn't uh, if it wasn't for the the American troops who were made up the primary uh, force of the UN troops. Um, that uh, moved into Korea, 
uh, <clears throat> and pushed up into eventually Hungnam uh, area, uh, a true father would have never been uh, freed from that, and history definitely would have been changed. He was scheduled for ex execution on the day that he was being liberated, which was uh, October 14th, and that's why we're celebrating the Rod of Armed Freedom Fest. We're celebrating freedom on this day, and uh, an armed forces, a godly armed forces, that is the United States Armed Forces, came in and was able to free um, True Father from uh, this death camp. Uh, and he was there over two years, uh, as you said, hard labor. Uh, the majority of people died by starvation and also overwork. Uh, they were working 16 plus hour days, uh, shoveling ammonium sulfate and getting poisoning in the lungs, etc. cetera. But um, uh, God, had his hand, God had his hand on him and uh, use the American forces, we believe, of course, and that's why we're so grateful and want to honor all the uh, uh, the veterans uh, because they're in the same tradition of that godly armed forces that was able to uh, free uh, True Father from uh, such a horrific uh, existence. What was his attitude towards war and the people who fought in them? Well, the uh, True Father uh, and, of course, um, his teaching always divided things between good and evil and uh, in any conflict obviously it's not just created um, out of a vacuum right this is these are uh, conflicts are created because there's human free will and because people have free will some people and I would say a vast minority of people choose to do evil um, and of course unite with Satan uh, that of course creates a foundation for a larger, usually connected and almost always connected with a centralization of power towards a, in a government. Of course, we've seen the last twenty last um, century alone that big government is the uh, greatest perpetrator of genocide and killing. Uh, uh, combined uh, in comparison to any war, um, over two hundred twenty million uh, people have been massacred by their own government. So. Uh, we always see this in combination, uh, communism, socialism, leftism, or just a centralization of any government system uh, leads to tremendous uh, danger for the civilization, the citizens. And Father always knew that. That's why he started the Washington Times. He started Tiempos de Mundo, all these conservative newspapers around the world. When uh, before the social media age and before... Um, uh, you know, major. It was it, he created some of the most major conservative news outlets um, uh, because of his deep experience of torture and persecution and uh, basically slavery, slavery under these big governments. And he knew that, as the Bible says, that Satan uses uh, powers on this earth. As the scripture says, you know, we fight not only against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, the rules of the darkness of the earth and spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan uses evil people in positions of power to enact his will. Uh, just like God will use um, people that he has chosen to enact his will, uh, evil also uh, does that as well. So Father knew that. He knew there's not only individuals making free will decisions uh, for evil, but that there is a... Um, there's a larger apparatus that draws people in to go against their conscience and to join in with this evil force, uh, then, which then, of course, uh, ends up in oppression and slavery uh, and entrapment of an entire population of people, really exploitation of entire population of peoples um, so that the ruling class can be uh, can live with impunity. So that Father always saw that as a very satanic system, and that's why we refer to those kind of things that the left is pushing or communism, North uh, and, uh, socialism, et cetera, as political Satanism, because it provides the actual environment for real satanic practices and satan Satanism to succeed. Um, and it, of course, always uh, is going after Christians and Christian, Judeo-Christian values. And of course, is always going after people who are yearning for liberty and uh, freedom. In your father's most famous teaching, The Divine Principle, he mentions the two world wars and how there's a good side fighting for God and an evil side fighting for Satan. And he also said that the soldiers that died on the battlefield fighting for God, that they would be in paradise with Jesus. Um, do you have anything to add to that? 
the, the conflicts, of course, that arise out of inev inevitability because an evil force has grown and metastasized like a large cancer upon the earth that is trying to uh, forcefully and, um, you know, dominate other uh, innocent peoples, it has to be stopped. So uh, Father was, of course, uh, he was not a pacifist. He understood that people have free will and that nations that are ruled by tyrants uh, do horrible things to other free peoples or uh, neighboring countries, etc., whatever the case may be. And uh, for example, in uh, World War II, when America had to step in and the Allied forces had to step in to fight Hitler, uh, he clearly identified Hitler as a satanic figure. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and that needed to be stopped and destroyed. So people who participated in those wars, of course, uh, he, our father always saw them as being on the godly side and that they had to stop evil uh, because um, a world ruled by evil is of course no uh, paradise or, or, or kingdom of God at all. It's a, it's a really, it becomes a, 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 a hell, living hell for the majority of peoples uh, that should be God's children. Actually, you mentioned Hitler. Um, some people associated your father with Hitler and even drew mustaches on posters of him. The leftists in America called him anti-Semitic and many other bad names, and they looked for ways to stop his activities. Uh, overall, politically, what were some of his viewpoints, goals, and activities? Yeah, I mean, those are all tactics of left that they continue to use today. I mean, they call President Trump racist, white supremacist, whatever. They call him a bigot. They call him, <laughs> he's, you know, that he's... Uh, that he's uh, the, the the party leader for white nationalists, and that all of Trump supporters are are, are racist and they're you know white supremacists. It's just it's just a tactic of the left, uh, the smearing and um, trying to call them names. They call Trump and I said maybe they call they come every name under the under the sun, uh, you know. So so this has always been a tactic of the left to uh, you know do throw these ad hominem attacks and basically do this kind of you know name calling. Um, uh, with no basis in reality whatsoever. But father always uh, understood that was a tactic of the left. He grew up in North Korea where they would use that constantly. There was propaganda constantly. There was, uh, he would recall uh, when he was a young boy, seeing people be uh, killed and executed in the public squares. And they would show that to all the children. You know, so these kind of things were uh, realities of what he saw. And of course, once he started preaching the gospel, which was illegal and, and teaching from the Bible, that you, I mean, he was imprisoned, he was, he was tortured, et cetera. Um, so he knew very well the evils of communism and socialism, which is unfortunately on the rise in America. Um, and unfortunately, many, many young people are being brainwashed into this very dangerous political uh, Satanism and this ideology that is so destructive. And it's so uh, destructive of families, marriage, women, uh, freedom, uh, sovereignty, private property, free markets, any entrepreneurship, business. Um, it's so destructive in so many uh, aspects. Um, and Father uh, fought against that uh, vociferously and vehemently with the organizations that he created. Uh, Washington Times was one of the uh, well-known uh, outlets of media that was constantly battling uh, with the leftist agenda. But of course, I think a lot of people can see how that's the left has grown and, ex and, and more and more has exposed itself as being very radical and supporting very radical uh, ideals, which are, go against, uh, you know, uh, God's sovereignty for peoples, right? And the people should have the crowns. The people should be sovereign people. The people should be free to make their own decisions. Uh, you know, the peoples should be the ones that defend uh, their neighborhoods and everybody else around, right? Um, and so he always instilled with us a, a sense of uh, deep, uh, you know, responsibility. He trained uh, most of, I mean, almost all the boys in our family have trained in martial arts and shooting early. Um, things like that, you know, so these were part of his, uh, it was part of his culture. He said, uh, young people should all be trained in the arts of self-defense. And of course, they should be active politically and standing up against uh, evil um, uh, and unrighteousness. So I, I think I think his work is very clear that he was always warning America that the real breakdown of the family and Christian values really comes politically from the, from uh, the government apparatus is uh, usually ruled by the left, but sometimes under uh, neocon, uh, quote, conservatives. Um, I think Trump is showing a different picture 
And he's not, even though he's not perfect on many fields, he is an outlier. He's uh, somebody who was never a real hardcore neocon. Um, and of course, um, even though he's a registered, was a registered Democrat, didn't really agree with the principles of the left um, as he as he's showing showing in his policies. So it's a, I think it's a very intense time. But I, I think Father always stood for those uh, values of personal responsibility, freedom, uh, and also the defending. Uh, of the innocent. Yeah, and you mentioned that your father fought against communism, but actually that was one of his central campaigns, right? He um, created Victory Over Communism, he created CARP, the Collegiate Association for the Research of Principle, and um, had young people go to college campuses across the US to, to fight against communists and socialism. Oh, absolutely, because he knew that the left would target, uh, you know, places of, quote, education um, to indoctrinate children and young people, and which he saw in North Korea. Um, and the brainwashing starts very young there. Um, so even in America, higher education or government schooling, uh, now elementary and middle school and high school, are pushing uh, the Bible out of schools, prayer out of schools, and, of course, other very radical agendas like uh, for example, the transgender agenda or th things like that. Um, very radical agendas, uh, which the majority of people in America, and obviously Christians don't agree with, but it's being forced down their throat um, through these institutions of, quote, learning. Um, and it's they're quickly not resembling institutions of learning where you learn both sides and you're, the, the student is supposed to make a decision. Uh, they're, they're becoming heavily biased. And, uh, and 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 very uh, damaging to the culture of America. Um, so there's so many things that are that uh, Father was very clear about in terms of education. And so the organizations like CARP or the organizations like um, VOC or Victory Over Communism, they were specifically designed to uh, debate communists and socialists um, on the campuses, so that people would hear the other side of how dangerous uh, those ideologies are. So uh, it was. It's very, very. It was a very important part of uh, Father's ministry. Reverend Moon spoke on Capitol Hill in 1975 before members of the House of Representatives on the topic "One Nation Under God." He said that America was born through God's blessing. This blessing, however, was not for Americans alone. This was God's blessing for the world. He went on to explain that there needs to be a reawakening in which America returns to its Judeo-Christian founding spirit and values. Is that relevant today or? Absolutely, it's relevant. Um, that was, if you just historically, that's right around the time of Roe v. Wade and the legalization of abortion and the massacre of you know innocent babies in the womb. And so spiritually, America had taken a very big turn right around that period of time. And of course, uh, the elimination of Bibles from school or the Ten Commandments from, you know, uh, places of, quote, government. Um, all this stuff started happening in a whirlwind very quickly, you know. And so America was founded on Judeo-Christian values and principles. You know, the principle of, uh, the, 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 the main principle of that we are uh, sinners saved by grace uh, and God's, and God, uh, uh, through his son, uh, you know, uh, has given us redemption. As, as Galatians says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free, right? For Christ has given a new life to us. And the American founding fathers really discovered a new life after they separated from the tyranny of Britain. And they were able to start fresh uh, with America, but under incredible circumstances of suffering and sacrifice that they had to pay. Uh, but it was founded on principles of understanding the tyranny of Britain and Europe, uh, the fascism and the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the centralized governments of the day. And so they had seen uh, all these things uh, throughout history. And they were, of course, historians and intellectuals. And they had an understanding of the past. Um, and, the, the, and so they found in America all the principles, all the, uh, the inalienable rights that are guarded in the Bill of Rights, um, all the you know enumerations in the Constitution uh, relate to that understanding and those prayers that they were constantly involved in, um, as this was a life and death struggle, you know. So 
Um, it was, I, I'm sure it, it, it was, our founding father's writings are filled with uh, spiritual, uh, you know, um, intimations and, you know, expositions. They're speaking directly about how important the Bible is, how important it is to be um, honorable uh, and, and how to follow Judeo-Christian culture. Um, they rejected um, the the things uh, of the of the um, civilizations that were, for example, allowing child sacrifice and uh, pedophilia and cultic uh, prostitution and the exploitation and sex trafficking of of, um, of children and women, etc. They rejected those kind of things, and of course, even though they were remnants of the British Empire and held slaves in their lifetime, or, or a third of them did, they freed them all. Uh, you know, uh, during or after their lifetime. So these pe these were people that weren't perfect, but they were based on Judeo-Christian values. And the whole constitution, the ethos, the culture of Christianity was the founding root of um, of America. It was not socialism, communism, it wasn't Islam, it was no other, it wasn't those kind of religions. It was religions that are based on a, on a personal understanding uh, and a relationship with Jesus Christ and God. Um, and that he gives us airship and he gives us kingship and he gives us freedom and he gives us the right to self-determination, all these kind of things. And of course, responsibility, right, is a huge factor of, of freedom, responsibility, uh, being responsible with your decisions with free will. So uh, it's absolutely critical because if America doesn't get back to its uh, founding, founding, founding roots and Judeo-Christian values, it will spiral very quickly into this very demonic nihilism that we see, this postmodern nihilism that we see in the modern day that, are, that so many young people are getting brainwashed into, indoctrinated into, which of course makes them extremely uh, depressed and extremely uh, empty of meaning and existence in life. Now couple that plus with, you know, uh, social media, which is constantly uh, promoting, you know, narcissism and how many likes you got, how many shares you got, et cetera. And the, the whole worth of an individual is how many, um, you know, likes or shares they have gotten on their social media platforms. We couple those two together and it's an explosive, uh, you know, tonic uh, of, 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 of negativity. And of course, uh, you know, we see that in the modern day, you know, all these, the mass shootings that are starting to rise up um, and, uh, you know, these indiscriminate kind of killings. Uh, and of course, we know that, you know, laws don't, won't help that. It's people who are prepared and people that are armed that can stop psychopaths that are trying to, uh, you know, uh, indiscriminately kill people for no reason other than their own fame or uh, infamy or whatever the case may be. So it's incumbent upon everybody in America at this time to really uh, get back to the roots of loving God, loving your neighbor, uh, having a sense of a responsibility uh, to protect the innocent as Jesus did. Um, Getting back to our roots, the Ten Commandments, just a basic thing like the Ten Commandments. I mean, getting back to that uh, in our in our uh, basic teachings of ethics uh, from a young age uh, to our kids. I mean, uh, is a, it goes a very long way in shaping people's hearts and, and minds and lives uh, when they're held accountable to God, you know, and and, and the community also uh, you know holds them to account. So. Absolutely, you know, our true father was always uh, uh, calling America back to his Judeo-Christian uh, founding and values. He was always, always calling, calling us back to scripture and strong families and strong networks of, of um, uh, and, and, and strong husband and wife relationships, strong parent-child relationships, etc. And even though we can't all be perfect in them as a whole, as an ethos, as a culture, we can always be striving to strengthen those uh, uh, those um, important uh, you know units of society, and of course that doesn't come unless we have Christ and uh, the Judeo-Christian culture that the Bible expo exposes, espouses uh, through its pages. So it's very important for us to get back to Scripture and to the Word of God. Absolutely critical. This is the final question, to your Father dedicated many years of his life to the United States, uh, to America. It's clear that he had a special place in his heart for this country. Is it because he could see that this would be the forefront of the battle between freedom and socialism and communism, and also maybe the foundation for the kingdom of heaven on earth? Well, he was always, you know, when he first arrived on the shores of America, 
um, he saw that America had a critical role, that it played the superpower's role, the good, the the, the, the godly uh, power's role, superpower's role, or the, uh, many times he would use the example of like the, like uh, even a third Israel, right? Um, or a, or even like, um, he would also call it, and in earlier days, like, it's like Rome to when Jesus was alive, right? That it was a center place from which all, all cultures followed. And, um, so it's critical as the cultural and military and economic superpower of the world. It's so critical that, um, America retains this Judeo Christian framework. Um, look at China. If, what a horrific, terrifying future for all humanity if the Communist Party of China becomes the superpower of the world. Absolutely horrific, nihilistic, atheistic, um, unbelievable persecution of religious people, including a Falun Gong Buddhist and Bible-believing Christians, and just unbelievable um, persecution. Uh, people have absolutely no freedoms. People are censored, monitored. Uh, people are constantly... Um, being uh, controlled by government. Of course, that sounds very similar to left, right? And it is a leftist uh, agenda in America. The people who are pushing those things uh, and many times work with the Chinese like Facebook and different social media platforms that work directly with China, Chinese government, um, and that help censor conservatives and help censor um, uh, libertarians in America. But these systems and these kind of individuals like that run these things and work with the Chinese government like Google, Facebook, Twitter, all these kind of things, they're extremely powerful and they're aiding and embedding serious, hardcore, uh, you know, uh, Hitler would be uh, a midget type of tyrants. I mean, these people are cold-blooded uh, genocidal murderers mm -hmm. and they do not believe in freely freedom. They believe total in total control. And it's very s sad to see that the left has exposed itself to being complicit and supportive of such unbelievably uh, satanic and destructive and, and evil regimes as the Chinese communist regime. So if America uh, does not retain its Judeo-Christian values as a superpower, it will, of course, lose God's blessing. Um, and so we are calling on America to remember its it's 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 root and that is the root is jesus christ the root is the bible the root is judeo christian values the root is jehovah the root is understanding the books of the bible understanding the principles of the bible understanding you know the the nature of god uh, understanding uh to love god and love your neighbor and to be uh, as the bible says poimano rule the nations with a shepherd's mindset and um so that's why the bible uh, describes a kingdom of God as an armed society, the rod of iron kingdom, uh, where his co-heirs have the power of the rod of iron, uh, a very powerful weapon that can shatter nations into pieces, as the scripture says, but they must rule the nations with uh, with uh, the shepherd's mindset. They must protect the innocent. They must uh, punish the evil, uh, the wicked, and they must not do it through centralized power. They must do it as a society of uh, individuals who have chosen God over Satan, chosen good over evil, and uh, and and exist to uh, uh, to to love God and love their neighbor in that kingdom. So, you know, we are uh, true fathers. You know, uh, his whole life was about that, and to wake up the body of Christ. So we are praying that everybody in the body of Christ and like-minded individuals who love freedom. Um, can uh, understand where those freedoms really come from, where sovereignty comes from, where being a king and a priest comes from. It comes from Almighty God. Uh, and, and we can discover him through the scripture. Um, and uh, it, would, it would benefit our young people greatly in this country to get back to, um, you know, Bible classes in school and prayer in school and the Ten Commandments back up. I mean, that would be a very important thing and i think more and more as we go um people will see how essential it is that if we if we uh exclude god um uh, this country will also be excluded from uh, god's will and so it is incumbent upon the people in korea i'm sorry in america uh in the u.s to uh, uh return back to god um and to 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 stand up for his righteousness and his for his kingdom Alrighty, thank you.